Okay, ever get that feeling like maybe you wandered into the wrong theater, like you bought a ticket for a lighthearted romp through Toontown? Yeah. But then 20 years later, right. it's like psychological thriller night. Mm. That's bonkers. 20 years later, in a nutshell. It is really fascinating to see how a reboot can use that nostalgia to draw you in, but then completely like flip the script. Yeah. We're not just revisiting these characters. We're like confronting their darkest impulses right. and then grappling with some like seriously unsettling questions. You are not kidding. The fan forums are blowing up. Yeah. Roger Rabbit has apparently gone full mad scientist trying to bring back his beloved Jessica. Oh. And yeah. then you've got this whole cryptic tourism board website. Right. It feels less like a trip to Disneyland or more like you know, a descent into madness. <laughs> a descent into madness, exactly. Yeah, they're brilliant for that, actually, by, yeah. like, scattering these clues across platforms. Right. And even, like, directly interacting with fans online. It's true. They've blurred the lines between, you know, fiction and reality. Yeah. It's a total meta-narrative experience. Meta-narrative, so, like, the show is kind of aware of itself yes. as a story. It's bringing us in on the joke. Exactly. Except some of these jokes are downright creepy. Yeah. And speaking of creepy, yeah. let's talk about the Phantom Block. Okay. Because from what I'm seeing, his presence starts subtly, almost like an urban legend. Exactly. And it's that slow burn yeah. that really gets under your skin. So, yeah. Fans have like been dissecting everything, the episodes, online forums, yeah. even in like, the Toontown Tourism Board website. Yeah. Right. They're piecing together these like breadcrumb trails of clues. I love They're, it. They're like noticing glitches, hidden messages, surveillance footage. What? That focuses just a little too long on bonkers. Oh no. It's this constant feeling that someone or something is watching. See, that's creepy. Yeah. It's unsettling. It is. And then it just keeps escalating. Oh, absolutely. First, it's just like bad vibes, you know. <laughs> and then the blot starts appearing in the background of classic Disney movies. That's right. Even hijacking Radio Disney with this like twisted hypnotic song. Yes. That's both catchy and terrifying. That song, it's it's brilliant. Not only is it insanely catchy, but it highlights the show's central themes, you know? Yeah. The lyrics hint at this vast conspiracy, a system that's always been wrong, you know? Like, we're, it's playing on those childhood memories, right. those familiar tunes, but twisting them into something unsettling. It's true. Putting on the Ritz will never sound the same. Never the same. And while we're on the subject of things that will haunt your dreams forever, okay, we have to talk about what's going on with Roger Rabbit. Oh, man. His storyline is truly tragic. It is. He's a shell of the tune we knew from who framed Roger Rabbit, oh, consumed by grief over Jessica's fate. Well, He's willing to go to any lengths, even draining the life out of other tunes to bring her back. Oh, gosh. It's heartbreaking and terrifying. The episode where Bonkers finds Roger's lab. Oh, no. The descriptions from fans. Yeah. Straight out of horror movie. Oh, really? Flickering lights, bubbling beakers, these poor like grayed out tunes whispering is it worth it ah. and then that moment with the canister of dip oh. you know that dark echo of his past trauma right right it's like a stark reminder that even in a world as seemingly lighthearted as toontown yeah darkness can find a foothold it can roger's actions force us to ask how far is too far when it comes to bringing back the ones we love? Right. Is there a point where grief can warp even the purest intentions? It's a good question. And then you have Jessica returning as, quote unquote, Jess. <sighs> completely unaware of her past. Wow. A blank slate. Yeah. Which just creates a whole other set of problems for Roger. Oh, I bet. And it's stirring up some serious drama in the fandom. Brilliant move by the writers. Yeah. Bringing Jessica back without her memories. They've introduced a whole new layer of complexity. They have. Can Roger truly be happy if the woman he loves doesn't even remember him? It's true. Talk about an emotional roller coaster. Oh, yeah. And it gets even juicier with this newcomer, Elias Hart, catching Jess's eye. Oh, no. Right. Wow. It's like the writers are deliberately poking at old wounds. Yeah. Forcing these characters and us, the audience, to confront the complexities of love, loss, and moving on. Exactly. We're not just watching a cartoon anymore. <laughs> We're invested in these characters and their emotional journeys. That's right. And speaking of complicated relationships, uh. let's talk about Bonkers and Miranda. Mm. So last time we were talking about Bugs, no name. Right. And like how he's this mischievous narrator. Yeah. But is he maybe also the mastermind 
behind everything that's going wrong in Toontown? It's a good question. The entire fandom is going crazy trying to figure it out. I bet. What makes it so fascinating is how Bugsy himself, like, leans into this whole ambiguity. Right. He's constantly interacting with the fans. Right. Dropping cryptic hints yeah. and blurring the lines between, you know, fiction and reality yeah. in a way that's both, like, exhilarating and kind of unnerving. He's like that friend who, like, loves to spoil movies. Yes. But instead of, like, ruining the surprise, he just makes you even more desperate to see it. Exactly. Like, those AMAs he hosted as the Phantom Blot. Oh, yeah. He didn't just answer questions. Yeah. He gave these, like, chillingly insightful responses. Really? That reveal, like, the Blot's motivations, his history, his resentment towards Toontown. Wow. It was like we were getting a glimpse into the mind of a villain. Oh, wow. And it felt incredibly real. It's like he was using those interactions with fans to kind of gauge our reactions. Oh, totally. Like to see how far he could push things before, yeah. you know, we broke or something. Definitely. And don't forget how he addresses those weird technical difficulties on the Toontown Tourism Board website. Oh, right. Blaming it on Mickey Mouse having a temper tantrum. Uh-huh. As if... Like, he wants us to know that he's in control. Oh, no. That he's manipulating events from behind the scenes. Okay, see, that sends chills down my spine. Right. It's one thing to have a villain in the story. Right. But to have him, like, acknowledge the audience toying with us directly. I know. That's a whole other level of creepy. It is, but you have to admit, it's incredibly effective yeah. by breaking that fourth wall. Right. And directly engaging with the fans, yeah. he adds this layer of meta-narrative complexity that mm -hmm. just makes us question everything. Everything we see. Exactly. It's like he's saying, you think you know this world, right? but you have no idea what I'm truly capable of. And then there's how he plays with the fan theories. Yes. Didn't he confirm that Mickey would be wielding that paintbrush from Epic Mickey uh -huh. instead of the Keyblade. He did. It was brilliant. What? Tapping into that existing lore yeah. and fan speculation, uh -huh. Bugsy just further blurs the lines between, like, what's canon right. and what's fan-made. It's like he's weaving together a narrative tapestry. Yes. But with threads pulled directly from the fandom's, like, collective imagination. Exactly. Speaking of these kind of unexpected crossovers. Can we talk about those Keyblade wielders that just, like, showed up? Yeah. It's like someone took the entire Disney afternoon, right. threw it into a blender with Kingdom Hearts. Yes. And honestly, I don't know how I feel about it. It's a bold move. It is. It opens up a whole new realm of possibilities. Right. Like, could Bugsy No Name be behind their arrival? Oh. Is he, like orchestrating some multiversal showdown. Oh my gosh. Pitting these heroes and villains from different Disney realities against each other. It wouldn't surprise me at this point. Right. The way he just casually introduces these mind-blowing elements. I see now. Like, it's all part of some grand scheme. It's masterful. It really is. And we haven't even touched on his use of music. Oh, yeah. He, like, weaponizes it. He does. Right, twisting these familiar tunes. Totally. Into something, like unsettling and manipulative. It's true. Smile, darn ya, smile, is just the tip of the iceberg. Right. Remember those glitches on Radio Disney? Oh, yeah. Those distorted messages hidden in those catchy jingles? Uh-huh. It's like he's trying to worm his way into our subconscious. It's like subliminal messaging. Yes. For the Disney generation. Exactly. Like, okay. seriously, who knew Mickey Mouse's voice could sound so sinister? It's brilliant. It is, right. Taking these iconic symbols of... In innocence of childhood nostalgia yeah. and like twisting them into something darker Jimmy. more unsettling yeah playing on our expectations right subverting them in a way that's both clever and chilling okay but remember that interview where bugsy was talking about yes wanting to explore these darker themes with bonkers yeah uh -huh. about showing the consequences of actions yeah pushing <laughs> these characters to their absolute limits right at the time i thought he was messing with us sure but now i'm not so sure there's a strange sincerity in his words. Yeah, there is, right. Like, he's trying to do something more than just, you know, shock and disturb. So you're saying that Bugsy No Name isn't just a villain. Maybe. But, like, some kind of moral compass? Maybe not a moral compass, but perhaps a mirror. Ooh. He reflects our fascination with darkness. Mm. Our desire to see these beloved characters face real stakes. 
yep. grapple with complex emotion. Right. He's forcing us to confront the darker side of Toontown. Right. The shadows that lurk beneath the surface of its cheerful facade. So he's not just messing with the characters. Yeah. He's messing with us. Yes. Making us question our own expectations and desires. Exactly. He's a meta narrative mastermind. Wow. Who's challenging us to think critically about the stories we consume yeah. and the impact they have on us. Which brings us right back to that big question. What's that? Is Bugsy No Name truly a villain? Right. Or is he just a storyteller? Yeah. Who's like pushing boundaries, right, yeah. forcing us to confront these kind of uncomfortable truths? I think the answer might lie in the final episode of the season. Oh. And judging by the cryptic hints and teasers, yeah. I think we're in for one wild ride. So we've journeyed into the darkest corners of Toontown. We really have. Witnessed Roger Rabbit's downfall. Yeah. And we felt the Phantom Blot's presence definitely lurking in every shadow. In every shadow. And like through it all, yeah. We're still trying to figure out Bugsy. <laughs> no. Name mm -hmm. the narrator, the it, puppet it, master, yeah. the maybe villain pulling the strings. Pulling the strings, exactly. Where do we go from here? That's the question, isn't it? Is there any hope for Bonkers? For Miranda, right? For like anybody in Toontown, yeah. Or is this whole like meta narrative experiment <laughs> gonna end with the entire cartoon world like imploding? Well, the fans are going nuts. Oh, I bet. Trying to figure out Bugsy's end game. Right. Some people think he's trying to expose Toontown. Really? Like rip off the happy face and yeah. show the darkness underneath. Which, let's be honest, yeah, wouldn't be that surprising. Not at this point. Right. Considering how the show has flipped everything on its head, he's like subverted all our expectations. Totally. Others think he's just, you know, yeah. driven by this like twisted creativity. Like oh. that he sees the characters, the story, like everything yeah. as his toys to play with. Oh. You oh. know, to manipulate, to torment <laughs> oh, okay. just for his own amusement. Which I mean Yeah. Considering his love for psychological torture. Right. And like those creepy jingles. Exactly. It's oh. definitely possible. Oh it is. And then there's that theory. Okay. That Bugsy No Name isn't even real. What? Like, not the way we think. Okay. Some fans are saying he's a tulpa. A tulpa. You know, like a being born uh, from all the fandoms, like anxieties. Oh, wow. A manifestation of our darkest desires, our morbid curiosity. So you're saying he's like a figment of our imagination. Maybe, right? Yeah. Like we willed him into existence. Wow. With all our obsession over, like, dark theories and what-ifs. That is both brilliant and terrifying. I know, right? It's like our fascination with the darkness created yeah. the very thing that might destroy everything. It's true. It's true. And let's not forget, yeah. Bugsy himself said there's a twist coming. Oh, right. Something that'll shatter the very fabric of Toontown. He did say that. And with Bill Cipher joining the party, right. anything is possible. I know. Are they going to, like merge dimensions right unleash chaos on a like multiversal scale or is bugsy messing with us again maybe like yeah. one giant cosmic prank it wouldn't surprise me honestly with this show i wouldn't rule it out Who either but even with all this talk of doom and gloom you yeah know, we have seen these glimmers of hope that's true even with everything falling apart you yeah. see these characters Searching for connection. Exactly. Like, Bonkers is finally confronting his past. Right. Trying to make things right with Miranda. Trying to rebuild what was broken. Roger, even though he's still heartbroken. Yeah. He's trying to heal, to move on. Yes. But not by being, you know, a bad guy. Not compromising his values. And Jess, even with amnesia. Right. She's finding her own way. She is. Discovering her own strength. It's a good reminder that even in the darkest times, mm -hmm. there's always hope. There's a chance to grow, to start again. So what's going to happen in the finale? I don't know. Bugsy promised to blow our minds. He did. Take us on a wild ride. I can't wait. I guess we'll just have to watch and find out. We will. But no matter what. Yeah. Bonkers. 20 years later has changed what a reboot can be. Totally. It's not afraid to experiment, to mess with us, to remind us yeah. that even in cartoons, right. there's darkness lurking around every corner. There is. And sometimes, sometimes that darkness is pretty entertaining. It really is. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Keep those theories coming. We'll be back soon. To explore a whole new world. Oh, right. Of fascinating and thought-provoking content.